Hey Ofties! Today we're on Khan Academy looking at Prove Triangle Congruence. This activity, let's go ahead and take a look at these four questions. Number one, Vanessa tried to prove that triangle KLM is congruent to triangle MNK. Okay, so one thing I want to go ahead and talk about is the order of our letters tells us which points correspond to each other. So let's call K and M be this blue color. So we know K and M go together. Let's say L and N go together as red. And then we have K and M. And that's going to be green. And notice I'm circling those twice. Okay, so that means that they still go together, but we only have um, those letters there. That means we have to have a shared side, which we see here, right here. And since we already know that shared sides are congruent to each other, let's go ahead and mark this with three tick marks. Now let's take a look to see what Vanessa said here. Okay, so KL. KL is congruent to MN. That's given? Yes, that's true because of the two tick marks. So let's just write that. Next, let's look at what we say about number two, which is LM is congruent to NK. So LM, which is one tick mark, is congruent to NK. And that's a given, says Vanessa. That's true because the tick marks are already there in our image. So remember, if something's given to us in an image, it is considered a given for our reason. So let's write that one tick mark. Next, we see that on number three, she's gone ahead and said that these triangles are congruent by side, side, side congruence. And um, KLM and MNK. Um, it looks like that's a true statement because since we know that our shared side is congruent to itself, that means that it is side, side, side congruence. But she did not tell us that KM was congruent to itself. So she missed that step. So that's what we're going to look for in our answer. I do want to take a moment and make sure we understand that, again, these letters match up. And that's how we can tell what pieces are congruent to what pieces. So we could say that this angle is congruent to this one. This angle is congruent to this one. And this one is congruent to this one. And we know that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. CPCTC. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That means if we know two triangles are congruent, all their corresponding parts are congruent. And to figure out what parts are corresponding, we can look at our congruent statement. LMK is going to be the second, the last, then the first. So that has to be congruent to NKM. So that ought to have three three arc marks. Let's see if we did that right. NKM, NKM, yes we did. Again, I just picked an angle, looked at the order it was in the congruent statement and had to map it that way. So let's say we wanted to look at KLM. That's going to be actually the order it already is. So that has to map to MNK. M and K, which also has one arc mark. So if you see, that's a way to check that you do have congruence. Let's go ahead and finish this problem. So A says, Vanessa used an invalid reason to justify the congruence of a pair of sides or angles. Not true, she had the correct reasons for both of those um, sides she claimed were congruent. B says, Vanessa only established some of the necessary conditions for a congruence criterion. That could be it, but let's continue to read and make sure. C, Vanessa established all necessary conditions, but then used an inappropriate congruence criterion. No, we decided she did say side, 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 which is true, but she just, she left a piece out. And D, Vanessa used a criterion that does not guarantee congruence. Side, side, side does guarantee congruence, so it's not that one either. It is B, just like we thought. Let's check. Awesome. Next question. Here we have another shared side situation. It looks um, more like a kite, and it is a kite. Um, let's look at our congruent statement. 
M and P go together. N and N go together, which is no surprise because they're the same letter. And Q and Q go together. Again, no surprise. So since we have those letters right on top of each other, that's a big clue in that we're going to have a reflection for our rigid transformation that maps one to the other. So just a clue in there. So on this one, we're actually going to use these drop down menus to actually choose um, the fill in proof. So the first statement we have in our proof is the measure of M in Q, M in Q is congruent to P in Q, P in Q. Okay, so we, we see that that's true. That's those two angles and they're both 30 and it is given. So we're good to check that that's true. And obviously they're 30 also because it says it in this statement. So we have to pick the angle that is also 107 degrees. We are given a number two that M Q N. So M Q N, that's 107. Let's just mark it twice. That has to be congruent to this other 107. Let's see how they're going to label it. It's going to be either P Q N or N Q P. So let's check. P Q N. Yes. Okay, so there's that one. And again, that's given because it's the angles are written in our picture. And we want to pick the statement that tells that the lengths are the same segment. So which segment is congruent to itself? That's this segment here, that shared side. We will choose that and that's going to be NQ is equal to NQ. So their lengths are equal. And finally, we have to figure out which congruent statement shows that the, these triangles are congruent. We talked about how it's going to be a reflection, um, but we still have to determine what kind of triangle congruence theorem. So we've got two angles and one side. So what order are those in? Angle, side, angle. Either that direction when we start with a 30 or if we start with a 107, angle, side, angle. So it's gonna be that angle, side, angle. And here we go. All right, Opties, that's it for some practice with our proved triangle congruence Khan Academy assignment. See you next time.